50 degrees is measured by the concept of complement angles in basic geometry. We still use a lot of the basic math in, in medicine, surprisingly. So this is based off of complement angles. It's called the Cobb angle. I mean, this, this uh, software allows me to do it. <clears throat> this, this, the software allows me to actually do that without having to calculate anything. So he had a fairly big curve that that progressed over time and 50, greater than 50 degrees in the uh, lumbar spine, his lower spine, and his uh, the thoracic spine, the spine in the chest cavity was 40, close to 48 degrees, so they were pretty sizable. And we know from natural history studies uh, in the past that especially curves in the lower part of the spine, it's going to continue to get worse. And the body, in order to keep his head upright, as you can imagine, if this continues to get worse, he'll start to tip over. In order for the body to keep the head upright, it'll produce another curve that will continue to get worse to compensate for this curve, a compensatory curve, to keep his head upright. So as you can imagine, if it continues to get worse, it curves, one curve will cause the other curve, and it'll continue to shorten downward. This, this curve will start to push into this lung field. This will start to push into his intestines. His ribs will come down, start to touch his pelvis, decreasing the space available for his organs and his abdomen, and decreasing the space available for his lungs and eventually his heart. So this over time would cause problems. Dealing with this earlier produces a better and more predictable result. It's easier to do the surgery when the curves are smaller. It's a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging when the curves are bigger. And also, as the patient gets older, their spine gets stiffer. So it's a lot more difficult to do the surgery. It requires a lot more surgical uh, techniques, different types of techniques, where we actually have to cut up the bones to loosen up the bones to get things to be more flexible for us to be able to get correction. And doing so causes a lot of blood loss and it's a lot of issues. So the older the patient, the bigger the deformity, the harder the surgery, with less predictable results and the patient goes through a lot more stuff. The surgery is done, um, we is kind of try to give it as, as simple and uh, easy to understand. We open up the spine from the back, we make it a, an incision through the skin, move all the muscles out of the way from the back of the spine. We actually have a spine model here. So as uh, to do the surgery, make an incision over the area that we're going to take care of. And it's right down through skin, right down to the tips of the spine. Then we move all the muscles out of the way to the edges of the bone here. So we only see everything from the back. We don't see anything from the front. All the organs are everything, everything that's uh, vital and important are all, the, are all in the front. We just move the muscles out of the way until we see the bone. Um, his curves are relatively big, but they're not as big as some of the ones we've had, we've had to take care of, so we didn't have to do much in terms of removing bone or loosening up bone tissue in the back. So once we've exposed the spine, meaning we've gotten all the muscle off and we can see the bones, then we go ahead and make little holes where we're going to put the screws in. And the screws come in from the back through this little segment called the pedicle into the bone in the front. And that allows us to get control to be able to, when the spine is crooked, to pull it straight. And that gives us the corrective force to do so. And then there are rods that are going on either side of the spinous processes that the screws are connected to to hold the correction. So let me show you what that x-ray looks like with the rods and screws in place. Okay. And there are rods in the back that hold the screws in a straight position. So this is the side view showing the screws going from the back into the front. And this is the x-rays showing the rods holding the spine straight. Now let me put the two side by side, get a uh, comparison so you can see what we were able to accomplish. So the rods and screws do two things. It makes them straight and it prevents them from getting worse. It's devices that hold the spine, and the spine actually takes over over time. It heals and becomes one bone over the area we do surgery. So from here to here, in the back, it'll become one sheet of bone. And over time, eventually, it doesn't need the rods and screws. We don't take them out because it is another surgery. And it's not a small surgery. You do have to go back, make the same incision, move the muscles out of the way, and, and take all the implants out. So we generally don't suggest it. The implants are built to be in the human body. I use uh, titanium and cobalt chrome, which are very biocompatible and generally don't cause any problems with them in the future.